And good morning, everybody. Again, hope you guys are doing wonderful. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, and welcome to this morning's A Different Perspective. I am always so glad that you join me every Saturday morning as millions of people have watched the show this year. It's kind of neat how we actually sat down with our media team this past week and just looked at the stats. It was absolutely incredible. Um, I was blown away. I looked at what we did the year before as we continued to move into our new year and seen what it was this year. And I want to thank you guys for always watching and things like that. And that's why we do such wonderful things in December and all of our giveaways. So what we can see here is our giveaways that we are going to continue to do. I absolutely love the things that we've done over the last month and we are continuing it this week. So we're going to take a look at our wonderful helpers that they've went from elves to happy new year people. There we go. You can see, I think, the well, TV screen will be to your, there you go. We got Erin on the right, and then her wonderful daughter, Lauren, two of our wonderful journalists and stuff. We have Allie there in the middle. She's part of our wonderful student program, which we have a cool video to show you. She's also an actress now. <laughs> My beautiful bride, <laughs> Christy there. Uh, and Erin Aaron, uh, is actually one of the reasons why all these graphics, she has an amazing team mm -hmm. with Deanna. And um, also Amy, they just sit there and produce all this beautiful stuff. All these slides you see, it comes from that great department. And our wonderful Dr. Bryce, who recently graduated. He's seeing wonderful people in, uh, in Green Bay and stuff. And he's a wonderful chiropractor doing great things. So we are thankful for all of them. So what they're going to do now is they're going to jump on their computers now. And as you are on adp.thewellnessway.com, I know a lot of you guys are on Facebook. I know a lot of you guys are on TikTok. I know a lot of you guys are on Instagram. But what I want you guys to do is this. Got to go to adp.thewellnessway.com. And they're going to be talking back and forth because they have a lot of giveaways to, to give to everybody today. Um, I'm excited about it. We have did a wonderful thing through the course of the holiday. Um, and once again, talk to them. If you need something, let them know because there are some people that didn't win, but they won. Because there are some people and families that need things. They let people, they even let people that they need some stuff. Because during the holidays, some people don't have the means other people have. And I believe that people need to be a blessing to other people during the times of need. So we gave away more than what we've even put on the, the screen up here. So if you look at, I think we have a thing of all the giveaways today. Yes, we have even more put out there. As you can saw when they sat there, you can see all the wonderful giveaways that our team had put together. And Erin and her team made that wonderful graphic that's there. So once again, talent. I am surrounded by massive talent doing wonderful things. But we are going to get into our show when it comes to women's health. But what I want you guys to always remember, going to our website is the key. And the one thing that I loved, and Aaron, I didn't even tell you this morning, I actually popped on this morning and looked at the newsletter, because I actually legitimately read. We have amazing things. Go to the thing, scroll all the way down, and what you're gonna do is you're going to see a, uh, you can put your email address in there. The one thing I'm so proud of, we do not solicit it, we do not try to sell you, we do anything, but we do a ton of giveaways, we do a ton of events, we have a bunch of things, so definitely put your email addresses, watch the wonderful newsletter. I read it every Saturday morning because our journalists do an incredible job. But I also believe that one of the most important parts of our company, of the show, of everything that we do, gotta scroll up and go to that top right part of the website, find a clinic, and guess what happens? And uh, you're gonna see all these wonderful docs from all over the country that are there. Uh, and Aaron, uh, Aaron's husband, oh well, wait, there's both Aaron's up there. <laughs> Aaron Walton's uh, husband over to the right uh, on the screen, she was the one that uh, is married to uh, Aaron, or excuse me, Christian. He is one of our people who handles all of our new offices come on board. And he texted me this morning and said, we will be having another California office um, very soon here. It was exciting. So once again, every, basically every week, every month, every couple weeks, we have more offices open up all over the country. So don't forget to go there, find a clinic. All these, all these people do such a wonderful job. The doctors that uh, own and run the clinics have great staff, have great people there, have great you know, coaches, have great uh, uh, other doctors, have our chiropractors, have sometimes nurses, have sometimes other, all our professions in there based on their background to bring the care that we have for you. So it's kind of exciting watching these things happen, develop and sit back over last year and reflect. But what we're going to continue doing, we're going to do a little shorter show today because we have a lot of and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, giveaways. So let's continue our series you can see on women's health. I think it's so vitally important for generations that you can take care of these wonderful people. And one of the things that we've been covering a lot of is right here is sugar bad for you. Okay. So what I want to do before I get into our perspective, I want to talk about that just for just a second. Um, thank you, because once again, as you can see, there's my newsletter right there. Um, great job, great job, Aaron. Poop check, I like that one. Okay, <laughs> so we got no sugar January coming up. But here's what happens this, is on my Instagram, it's not a joke, probably the thing I check the most 
um, is my Instagram. It really is. Um, we have TikTok, we have a ton of followers, Instagram, Facebook, all those. But on Instagram, I do try to answer the majority of your questions. Dr. Lucas, Lauren's husband that you saw there, um, Lauren's husband and I probably answer the, well, we answer the majority of questions that are on there. But the idea is this, if you have a question, reach out to me. If you have something very serious to talk to me about, send me an email at pflynn.com. And me and Dr. Bryce and, and a couple of our docs, I do get so many emails every single day. We will get back to you. We always try to get back to you. Now, once again, but I do have a rule. If you are seeing one of my people that work in one of the clinics, please do not message me because um, I don't know your full story. But some people just have some really horrible things that happen in their health, and you can reach out, and I'll try to give you some information that's going to you know, best give you some ideas that you can think about and everything. Go from there. So you can, once again, Instagram. But this happened a lot um, over the last... Uh, couple months and people saying, Doc, is sugar bad for me? Why is it when I cut back, I see a lot of good things happen uh, compared to when I eat it? Well, once again, just remember this. Our body needs sugar. So let me say that. It needs glucose. It does. You need it for energy production. Yes, you can use uh, certain fatty acids for it, no doubt. But something that's very available is glucose. Use it for energy. I think it's a must. Um, so I'm not a, um, I'm not a person that says no sugar. Um, it's kind of funny we're talking about no sugar challenge. I'm going to explain that in just a little bit. But the idea is this. You need sugar. It's just that when I say no sugar, I say cut back on it. Just people consume too much for too long period of time. Let me say again. They consume too much for too long period of time. Uh, I can honestly tell you that when you look at carbohydrates, no it's again, you're going to try to do the ones that have the least available glucose during the no sugar challenge, and it does make a difference. Now, a lot of people don't realize that if you would go with, try to eliminate all sugars, which you can't really, even some of your meats and stuff have a, a form of carbohydrate in there that's gonna change your glucose a little bit. But the idea is this, is if you, you try to deplete all them, yes, there could be some things that are not good, but I tell people you wanna cut back dramatically because people through the years have been trained to eat way too much. So that's again, sugar is bad? No, it's not bad. I think it's essential for life, but it's consumed way too much, and it's why we have so many conditions that we are suffering with today. So that being said, let's move into our continued women's health perspective on the issues of weight loss today. All right, we have been talking a lot about it and we know this a lot. We talked about how countries across the world have been, uh, if you look at when they gain weight, they see a lot in the last uh, part of the year uh, from roughly towards the end of October through the second week of January. So a lot of people focus on that because what they do is they'll gain the weight during that time but then what happens is this, they don't lose it through the last year, so every year they kind of get a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. So we're gonna continue our thing on weight loss, just kind of going through it that way. It's so vitally important for us to do that because once again, it's what you guys are asking for the most to learn about. And as you can see from our little graphic here, weight loss, we're gonna talk about something that's extremely important, which I believe is so important is this right here. How to reduce your calories, because calories matter, is to eat more proteins. All right. For, to build upon the show that we did last time, once again, do calories matter? Absolutely, we covered that in great detail over the last two shows, please go back and look at that. But I wanna talk about this. This happened this week a ton, that's why I showed you my Instagram. I had so many messages, let me underestimate, probably 500 messages this week to say, Doc, I tried to increase my protein intake, but I couldn't even get to the kind of RDAs, the what you kind of recommend uh, per gram per my body weight. I was satisfied very quickly. I didn't eat as much and I even lost weight this week. Yes. Now, once again, one of the things you will lose some weight right away because you'll deplete your glycogen from your liver and your muscles, which does hold water. So therefore you lose a little bit more water weight than actually true fat, but you do lose some fat, hopefully within a pound or two in a week based on the amount of calories you did or did not consume. But when you eat proteins, proteins have very um, low calorie intake. So therefore, by nature, you feel massively satisfied. And so I just had the women in there, I'm no joke, I didn't have one man uh, text me during time, but it was actually all women saying, Doc, I couldn't even get up to like 90 gram of protein and I was full and I found myself I didn't want to eat anymore. Yes, that's the beautiful thing about it. So everybody that wrote to me, they were like, I didn't feel hungry. I didn't feel like I was missing out. Variety wasn't there, I get that. <laughs> Every person loves a variety of foods. But what they did say, and that's the key, 
is by trying to focus on their protein first, they were just satisfied quicker. The satiety was there, which means, for example, is they felt well enough to say, listen, I'm not hungry anymore. They stopped eating. And many of you women, thank you for sending the messages, said, I was just full. I didn't want to eat anymore. And I found myself even kind of skipping a little bit because it just made me so satisfied. I just didn't want to eat. And then when they look back at their calories and they told me what they were doing, one woman uh, listed out what she ate and I averaged out and it was about 1400 calories. And I sent that back to her. She's like, no way. It can't be 1400 calories. I feel like I'm stuffed. No, you just, what you did is you took the protein intake that really gave your body what it needed. It was very satisfying. Now, the one thing that was nice about it this way, uh, the person that did, I said, can you explain to me and show me what you ate? She showed me she had liver, she had eggs, she had red meat, she had fish and stuff. And uh, she even threw some sauerkraut in there. Once again, because of his people know I love fiber and love all the fermented fibers, which are the best, which I did have a couple things, which we're going to cover at next show. Now, the reason why I say this all the time is this. Um, as our wonderful people over here are commenting and talking back and forth with all of you viewers. Tell me what you want to see. See, because today's show is actually changed a little bit than I originally planned when I plan these out sometimes for a month or two ahead is because of your dialogue. And one thing that we're going to talk about is obviously the plant-based proteins. But once again, I'm going to move a little bit more towards understand why I believe fiber can't be getting rid of. Like this morning, I had this wonderful woman, and what I'll do is I will, won't use her uh, last name, but even right here, her name is Rebecca, all right? Rebecca right here, I, she messaged me last night, it was all, but it was about a male-female question, and she said her husband likes what I'm doing, things like that, but what happened, what happened oh, wait, wait, wrong one. <laughs> I'll take it back, it wasn't Rebecca. <laughs> I got it wrong. Wait, there we go. Amanda, there it is. Sorry, I get so many messages, it's kind of fun. Amanda said to me, she's like, okay, listen, you know, thank you very much for getting back to me quickly. Yes, I try to get back to you quickly as I possibly can. But what happened is this, she was asking me a male, female question. And then she said, hey, my husband thinks that we should be all carnivore, okay? Well, once again, I understand probably what they mean by it. And I'm gonna kind of go over it that way, but uh, I just can't give up certain fibers. But then I wanna explain why I don't wanna give up certain fibers. I don't think there's anything wrong with carnivore. There's actually no joke. The person that really saw some change this week, she ate more carnivore type trying to get her protein in. But the idea is this, is it's okay to actually experiment a little bit with some of these things and see what happens. And I wanna go through those and show people why they'll have some results with they just go carnivore for a little bit. But then I have some concerns if that kind of goes for a little bit and, and I will go back and forth. Um, but once again, I I'm, I'm wanna see people first get enough protein. So by nature, they're gonna see more carnivores because <laughs> once you eat all the meat, you're just like, I'm pretty stuffed, all right? So eat more protein. It does help you reduce your calories. It's done a wonderful job of actually causing people to get their essential amino acids they did. And I didn't realize that this graph that my wonderful Erin Krieger put together uh, for me, I send her things that I kind of want to have done and, and then she makes them into the beautiful insights as you can see right there. The composition of the body, it's just in general. Remember, these are general numbers, but they're very close, okay? 65% water, and once again, because we're a lot of space, it's filled with a lot of water and plasma and things like that. 20% protein, 10% fat, 4% minerals, 1% carbohydrate. So if we just look at how we should eat, you know, I would say that the majority of our foods have to be protein focused. And you will get some healthy fats with those. You will get great minerals. One of the reasons why I do love liver is because you get protein but the amount of minerals you even get compared to just a muscle meat, like a ribeye or tenderloin, I just like the high dense nutrient foods. So when you see that, um, the one thing that I was very impressed, <laughs> it was great because before we were starting jamming the music, I was having a lot of fun and had to run to the bathroom before I went. So we went into our big kitchen area that way. And uh, all of the wonderful, beautiful ladies here, they're all around in a circle around the, around the uh, center. And guess what they're all munching on? Ah, liverwurst. See, they're all sitting there. They're scooping it out. Nothing sexier than women sitting around eating organ meats together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I very highly entertain pretty easily. That's why. But anyways, it was kind of neat. They were sitting around just munching on liverwurst. That means they had heart, liver, and kidney. And once again, it's going to help them uh, not only be satisfied through the show as far as their hunger, but think about dense minerals. So let's take a look at that graph one more time that our wonderful Aaron Krieger and team put together. Roughly 65% water, 20% proteins, 10% fats, 4% minerals, 1% carbohydrate. It's a rough estimate what the body is roughly made of. And so if I'm going to build a house and I look at the raw material that we need, I'm gonna bring more lumber than nails, you know what I'm saying, to a house to build. And that's one thing nice about it. Now, 
as I talk so much about animal products, um, a lot of you guys, once again, ask this question, and I totally support this. This is one thing that, that uh, um, uh, by nature, we're all tribal. We are. And what I mean by this is we all like to be part of a group. We do, even me. You know what I'm saying? Heck, I created a group for crying out loud. But the idea is this. We all like to be part of a group. But being part of a group should be a group of individuals that are always sharing information, talking about stuff, discussing things. And that's why I tell people, I'm always willing to learn as much as I possibly can. It's why I continue to take more classes. This week, I'm very proud of this. I signed up for two classes, uh, one on metabolism and one on vaccination through Harvard Medical School's online courses that you can go do. I encourage all of my doctors to go do them. And just, uh, it's no joke, just apply, write your essay. Uh, I've done already, so I've taken it, I didn't have to reapply. But the idea is this, and, and pay your tuition, and guess what happens? Take these wonderful classes. And by doing that, once again, you're always looking to learn, always looking to hear, and I'm gonna pull from one of the references that our last, my last, Harvard Medical School class um, actually gives us a reference to take. And I'm gonna show you how, when you have some discrepancy research that way, how they put it out there. And I like what they did in post it. We're gonna talk about that. See, so being in the camp of nutrition that way, or being in the camp of healthcare, you know, there are different camps on there. And so a lot of people say, well, doc, you're, you're more of a kind of carnival people. So a lot of carnival people co comment to myself. Not true, okay? Once again, I look at the foods that are going to give me when it comes to, like I talked about that graph before, that give me the best, most available proteins, but I look at the easiest way to do it. Now, and, and not a joke, by far, so the easiest way to get sufficient proteins that you need is more of an animal base. There's no doubt, okay? No doubt. Now, don't get this misconception. That doesn't mean you can't get it by plant sources. Is it more difficult? Yes. Does it take a little bit more effort and work? Yes. Is there less available protein? And once again, we're going to cover the protein content in each one of the plants that I believe, uh, if you're going to do it, are my favorites. Now, other people will have different favorites, but I'm going to kind of go over my favorites. Um, and I'll explain why they're my favorites. But understand, for all of you that ask me the question, can you do no sugar challenge? Can you um, get proteins from plant sources? Yes. Now, if you eat, for example, a plant protein and it says two grams of protein, do you get all two grams? Probably not. You may only get one gram because of the availability. It's called, it's called a dia score, okay? So you just gotta eat a little bit more. You gotta do a little bit more preparation and compared to like if you just had an ounce of liver, much different availability. You might get 100% of the available protein available there. That's the, so there's some differences there. So I'm not saying you can't do it from a plant-based way. You can. I have taken care of hundreds and hundreds of people that were vegan or vegetarian that once again, we got them enough protein, they, they would even come and say, man, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but it can be done. So carnivore camp, guess what happens? Love you guys. Um, vegan camp, love you guys. Um, I'm kind of in the middle, do you know what I'm saying? Um, because I love my plants that I believe need to be fermented. Um, and I, one, of my, one of my favorite plant-based proteins, um, I kind of have on a regular basis because I actually do it on a regular basis because I think it has not only fantastic benefits from a protein standpoint, but also from other standpoints. So it's not just protein I'm looking to get from it. Okay, there's great fiber, there's great minerals, there's great vitamins that come from it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put up my favorite plant-based proteins, and here they are, okay? And, I, and the order that I like them too. Dominate, number one, hemp. Chia, lentils, chickpeas, black beans, pinto beans, green peas, Brussels sprouts, pistachios, and quinoa. Now, I can honestly tell you, I can't remember the last time I ate quinoa. I can't. You say, um, I try to, my personal standing, I try to stay from a lot of grains that way, but if you just look at these things that are there, I put the grain in there so people had a grain, but these are very important protein sources. Um, now, once again, they actually have some a very high availability. There's a good protein sources in there. There's great grams there. I'm gonna show it to you in a second here. But as you look, what I want people to understand is this, is there's less available protein, so you gotta eat a little bit more, and there's less available as far as percentage-wise. So when I put it up here, if you take a look again at the graph, or the list, there they are. And here's the protein content you get from them. For example, to get five grams of protein um, from hemp, you need one tablespoon. One tablespoon. Now, one thing I want to show you though is this: is it says is it says that we have uh, um, from one tablespoon you get five grams of protein. That's just the measurement of the food itself, because it's very highly bound to fiber. 
it doesn't release all five grams. So in some people you may get three grams or you may get two grams based on your digestive tract compared to like when it does come to more of a meat source. Uh, one of the highest um, available proteins, and this is why it's the kind of like the king in the vegan world, is a soy-based product, which I'm going to show you. Now, I don't, I don't have it up there, and I'll explain why I don't have it up there. But I will tell you, there are some benefits from it. I'm going to go through those, and I know the anti-soy people are going to hate me, and I know the pro-soy people are going to like me, and I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle, okay, uh, based on all the research available. Now, if we take a look at the graph again that way, see if we look at some of the things, and it's very easy to throw a hemp hearts on a salad or do things or just eat them. I like to eat them just like uh, a little snack. Chia, chia pudding. Ugh, ugh, it's great. I love chia pudding. Fantastic. Let it soak overnight. Chia bubbles up. It's fantastic. Uh, lentils, uh, chickpeas, hummus. I mean, look at the amount of stuff you can get from a hummus. I mean, you can make all the great flavors from it. Um, black beans, if you notice that when even next door at our organic restaurant, um, I will have a bowl with cauliflower rice and black beans in there and also get pinto beans. Pinto beans have a wonderful amount uh, per cup and everything. Green peas, Brussels sprouts, people don't realize the amount of protein that Brussels sprouts have. It's a very good high protein that's available. Pistachios, um, also quinoa. Now, if you look, those are very decent plant protein sources. And if you can add them up and get enough of them, so if we look at this and we kind of talk about it, um, based on the diet score, once again, I'm gonna go through that all next year too, is let's say that even with chickpeas, you say, Doc, one cup, if I wanna get 100 grams of protein, I just need to eat like six cups of chickpeas. Now, I'm over-exaggerating because no one's gonna eat six, six cups of it, but just get my point is, even if you eat 100 grams of chickpeas, you might not be getting 100 grams. You might be only getting 50. See, that's one of the things that people don't realize when it comes to plant-based, that you kind of probably have to eat 200 to get the 100 because of the availability. Once again, the diet score, the digestive availability of these proteins. Animal proteins just have a lot more digestible and available protein sources for you to get your 20, uh, 20 amino acids and your nine essential amino acids. And the reason why I kind of move a little bit more towards the, the meat area as far as um, animal products is trying to get the leucine content, which is really important for muscle protein synthesis, so you have greater health as you get older. There is, there is a whole group of individuals who I do like their stuff. They're, they call them muscle-centric health. I know what they mean by it that way. There's a lot of great benefits that come from that. And I do agree that you need enough leucine in order to do it. I think all the research shows that quite well. But if you look at these sources once again, they will be put up, they'll be posted, uh, write these down, take a snapshot, take a look at the graph, take a look at the picture, Travis put it back up again here, is look at the very important protein sources and what you can get from them and try to actually, once again, uh, consume them. I'm gonna consume a bunch of them during the holidays, during no sugar, there's uh, the majority of them are on there. Uh, I think pistachios is not on there just because pistachios has the highest amount of, of sugar of all the nuts, people do not realize that. Pistachios are, to me, are one of the best tasting and stuff, but they do have a great protein source. Now, that being said, let's talk about on the whole plant base, what is still. Now, once again, as I list all those, those are extremely high, but there is one food source that does what? That does have more protein per thing and absorbability, the diet scores the highest on it. And guess what? It's a soy-based product. It's um, edamame, edamame. Um, I, always have, I always have a hard time saying it just basically the good old soybean. Now, I just watched half the audience freak out because I kind of shy people away from soy. But the reason why I do is this. I, I am not a fan. I know a lot of people don't like this. I'm not a fan of GMOs. I just am not. I, it just scares me. It really does. I just cannot consume a plant that can withstand um, glyphosate that actually has listed as an antibiotic. So you gotta alter that plant, something fierce. And once again, so I just, in 95% of the, and this is recorded from our USDA stats, 95% of all soy within the U.S. is genetically modified. GMO, pesticide high, I just, just can't do it. I can't. Now, once again, um, if you look at other countries, and this is what they do, they compare them. It's kind of like saying, you know, when people argue about calories, they say, look at the people over there. Yeah, but how is their soy made? And on top of it, a lot of products in the plant world, if you look at the history, look at, even, look at even herbs. The majority of herbs for thousands of years were prepared. 
That's why most of your herbs were in tea form. It's why I use high dose potency liquid herbs because they're prepared and they lose some of the things that carnivores talk about. Now, I know it's kind of funny, but let me talk about this. Um, I do believe that plant plants have defense mechanisms. They do, they really do. They, they have defenses. They don't want to die no more than else does. And so one of the arguments, and I find it funny, but this is just me because I just kind of think about this stuff because when people say, because uh, one of the biggest things is they say, hey, listen, plants have def defense mechanisms. They don't want to die. And so they have these things. So it shows that they won't want to be eaten. Well, guess what happens? If the cow knew you were going to kill him and eat him, he has teeth. He'd probably bite you too. He doesn't want to die either. You know, maybe that's the true mad cow disease. Moo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who knows? It's just, you know what I'm saying? Now, the cows have hoofs. Maybe they'd kick you. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the chicken would peck you, okay? Maybe the, the, poor, the pig would crush you and bite you. They have a bite. So some of the funny concepts are saying, well, plants have defense mechanisms. If I know you're going to try to eat me, I'm going to defend myself, you know? Uh, I know I think about the dumbest shit sometimes. I get it, okay? But that's the point. So I, I hear all these arguments. I'm going, we, every person has a survival mechanism from an animal to a human to a plant, no doubt. Now, do some of them have high defense mechanisms that could actually cause a little disruption? Yes, but you know what's interesting? You know what's interesting? And this is the part that I absolutely love that was figured out before all the science came in. We used to have to preserve our food through fermentation and other methods that affected those plants. When you prepare a food in some form of liquid form, it can change the phytic acid. It can change, once again, the anti-nutrients. It can change all those things. And that's why when I do look at soy products, um, if it's fermented and done well, I can see the major health benefits. I really can. I really can. I can see the major benefit from it if it's prepared right. But the majority of our foods, especially US and Europe and most of your developed countries, it's not about good preparation. It's about speed, cost, and availability. And so that's why you can get these things so cheap. But if the thing is prepared and done well, I believe there's health benefits. Because once again, I watch the anti-soy people and the pro-soy people sit and argue back. And in the joke, you can pull up research, let's take a look. The insights and the harmful effects of soy protein are reviewed. They did big meta-analysis and there's thousands of these on PubMed. Uh, the goitrogenic and the estrogenic effects of soy ulcer flavors. You watch people that have breast cancer say it's horrible. You watch people that doctors say it's awesome. You watch it vice versa. It affects the thyroid, it, you know, it's the goitrogen, causes the goitrogens. I'm 100% uh, understand both sides. I really do. Now, the one thing I told you, this is one of the resources that during my Harvard class that they use a lot, the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, they reference this a lot, okay? And I agree, they try to do put some good stuff up there um, and they talk about it. And you can see the straight talk about soy. Let's go on to the second paragraph there. Soy is exalted as a health food, some with claims of um, uh, like taming hot, flash, uh, taming hot flashes, um, warding off osteoporosis and protecting against hormonal cancers like breast cancer and, and prostate. Now, once again, you read that, you're like, oh my goodness, but guess what? The next final paragraph, at the same time, soy is uh, shunned by others for the fear that may cause breast cancer, thyroid problems, dementia, uh, through these claims have not been substantiated. Whether published in a popular press article or whether a designed clinical study, some debate about soy remains in the species of the legume family. A nutritional scientist often label soy as a food with potential and significant health benefits. However, due to a contrary research that suggests possible negative effects of soy in certain uh, situations, uh, there has been a hesitancy to wholeheartedly promote soy. Now, I want to kind of come back, and this is why I sent them a message, and once again, because I really respect my, my professors that talked about this and reference um, the, the, Chan, the Harvard T.H. Chan uh, Public School Health. I, so I sent them a message, I really did, and I said, look at the paragraph three again, look at the end of the paragraph two. If you look, let's go here. Um, Though these claims have not been substantiated, but you can see down in the next paragraph, there is research that shows the negative effects. So they have been substantiated. See, so I kind of go, all right, why are you saying it's not substantiated, but it is by research? So this is some of the things that make people very confused. So all I just did as I read, and I'm like going, okay, listen, I read every article going, hey, listen, there is a negative effect that happens here, and there's a positive effect. If it's hundred research articles about it. Research, research ones, PubMed, uh, there's double blinds, there's animal studies, there's human studies, all those things. Vice versa, on the flip side, there's hundreds of studies that say, listen, 
they look at the ingredients and say, this, this, this. Well, once again, I can see and read through that and go, yeah, I agree. There's certain protein availability and that's one thing. The diet score, the available protein, is the highest in soy. That's why it's so popular among vegans. So then you watch these two camps argue about stuff. I'm in the middle. I'll say, listen, I've seen clinical benefit from a fermented, organic, non-GMO soy product. I've seen it. I haven't seen, and even it didn't have any question or other effects. And, but on top of this way, with some of the phytoestrogens, I personally don't want a breast cancer person to do that because there's so many other great proteins. See, that's the thing. I'm not gonna argue about soy when I know they can do hemp and chia or they can do chickpeas to get their protein because what's the major basis you're trying to get from there? Now, I'm a big fan of NATO kinase, one of the enzymes that come from there. And so if I need something clinically, I'll say, listen, I would want you to eat some good non-GMO, organic, fermented, because once again, that fermentation process changes the dynamic of the food, just like soaking does. If you soak certain seeds and nuts, they're better for you. See, a lot of food is done with preparation. The nice thing about red meat, you can pretty much eat red meat raw and have some major benefit from it. So it's just easier. So when I talk about the different camps, just understand, I'm trying to apply them per individual that comes in or I talk to or vice versa. If there's some clinical realm that they're suffering with, they need a little bit more direction based on their needs. So I don't want to get into tribal camps arguing about these things. I want to say, listen, I'm kind of in the middle on most of these things because I see benefits and I see detriments. I see the benefits of actually not doing it. I see the benefits of doing it. I see detriments of doing it. I see detriments not doing it. And there's other things and also certain alternatives. Ha! Huh. So I'm hoping that the people that are vegan, vegetarian understand that point. I'm hoping the people that are carnivore understand that point. And I'm hoping that I can bridge the gap a little bit between there. And I'm always going to bridge a gap, not based on putting information out there. And here's the one thing that I believe I'm so blessed with. Any idea that I share with you guys, it's applied to every office across the country. See, so people would sit there and argue information. I'm like, All right, is it applicable to the people you're taking care of? Well, I'll take care of anybody. Okay, then you're just putting out information, which I think is fantastic. I think everybody should put out information. But it has to be applicable. It does. And that's why it's hard to apply carnivore to everybody or vegan to everybody and things like that because it doesn't work for certain people. It has to be very individualized per healthcare needs that way. So as you can see here, as we move on, we reduce your calories by getting that protein take. I'm a fan of doing it from an animal place or, or a, a plant base, but you need to limit the sugar intake. So I'm gonna keep this up here for a second so you guys can scan it with your phone. It is the card that you can go over and get the, uh, join our no sugar challenge that starts on Monday. And you can get the things to download and how to eat and what things, things like that. And once again, as you can notice this, if you look at what it comes to people when they do these things, focus on your protein. If you focus on your protein by nature, you're going to eat less sugar. Now, are there carbohydrates on these lists? Yes, you can see, first of all, things to avoid. You know what I'm saying? They're pretty simple. You're gonna avoid some of the bigger starchy. <laughs> Some Someone said to me the other day, can I have fruit and can I have starchy vegetables? Um, a lot of available glucose. So there's certain fruits that you can have and certain fruits you can't. Now, do both of them still have some sugar? Absolutely. It's just the least available sugar, the smallest amount of glucose available. So therefore, guess what? It's better. But if you can see here, there's a lot of great things that you can consume. A lot of great things, including the meats and everything that are on there. It's quite a great. So understand with the no sugar challenge, what we are doing is we're trying to get you to reduce your calories. And that's why when you eat a little bit higher base protein things um, from plant or meat source, you're going to have satiety better, which means you're going to be satisfied quicker. You're going to reduce your number of calories. And even if you eat three meals a day, like the people that are messaging me said, Doc, I'm not intermittent fasting. I'm not fasting at all. Yet my calorie intake is low. I lost weight. I did the thing. Yes. And I'm, I'm okay if you decide to time restrict your eating just for if that keeps you with your calories low. I'm cool with that. But I do like a morning and a night meal. So just because the available proteins in the morning, you want to digest the plants more, you want to digest the animals more, you get more out of it in the morning than you do at nighttime. But the idea is this, we're just trying to keep the available glucose down. So please do me a favor. Don't sit there and ask me every question going, why is this nut allowed and why is it not? Because there's less sugar in that nut. 
okay, than the other nuts. Why is this fruit allowed? Why is it? Because there's less sugar. It's, there's no such thing as no sugar because even the highest protein, the highest fatty acid based food does have some carbohydrates in there. Now, once again, if I eat like sauerkraut compared to a banana, they both have good properties. It's just the banana is going to spike your blood sugar levels and I don't want to spike them during this time. I want to keep them as low as possible so that our body can actually take and look at it for the other available glucoses that are in your foods and also the other available glucoses that are in our muscles, our organs, our tissues, and, and just in our spaces so your body can go after that for energy and destroy the adipose tissue and other things available for energy. So that's why we're trying to do that during time. And yes, do people lose weight during no sugar? Now, let me give you some of you, some of you guys that are going to have this problem. Some of you guys will follow this to a T, uh, but if you don't eat enough animal proteins, you're going to eat too many calories, so you won't lose weight. See, that's the thing. If you don't focus on your calories and just go all towards the dominant carbohydrates, you're not going to lose weight because you're still eating too many calories. If you eat 2,500 uh, calories of plant-based proteins every day or more, and you're only burning 2,000 calories per your metabolism, it's going to be a bad day for you. It is. You're just not going to lose weight even doing no sugar. And if you have some liver issues and you can't metabolize and oxidize these fats, there's some problems. So if you focus on the protein first, we're going to help. It's going to make you much more satisfied. It's going to reduce your calorie intake, and then guess what's going to happen? It's going to be much better for you. You're going to actually have a chance of getting more fat metabolism, which is what you want, because you want to lose that weight that you may have gained over the last two and a half, three months, so you can get back in the clothes that you want to get back there. All right. That being said, guys, let's head into our last 10%. One of the wonderful things that I get the opportunity to do is this, is I get to add to our team every single year. Um, I reflected with our wonderful people and, all, and a lot of our leaders yesterday about the year. You know, the only thing is this, I love living in the past a little bit. And what I mean by that is this, living in the past doesn't mean you um, are regretting the past in any way, but you look back and go, shouldn't have done this, do this, <laughs> this is a bad thing, don't do it again, this, this, it's just reflection. And we're reflecting on some of the things that were so great this past year. And there were so many of them. Um, we are bigger. We have more offices. We have more staff. We have more wonderful people. We have more talented people. Um, everything that you see put together here is from great individuals. If you ever see somebody great, look around them. Because there's only so much talent one person can have. And talent is not enough. It takes a group of individuals to do great things. And I can honestly tell you, not only have I hired, but our team and our HR department and everybody has hired extremely great people that are doing wonderful things. And we are so excited for 2024 because 2023, I guess if you call it from a business standpoint, was a record. Um, we've gotten bigger every single year. We've always got more offices every year. We take care of more patients. And sometimes I'm sad about that. Sometimes I'm sad that there is more patience. For anybody that's ever critical of what we do, I tell people this. Well, if the current form of healthcare was so right, we wouldn't even need to be existing. We wouldn't. There would be no need for us. So that, but when you add value and you add things to the community and you add things to people's lives, uh, they come in by the droves. They really do. So one challenge I have for all you guys, look for a problem that needs to be fixed and add value to people and guess what happens? You can do anything you want to do. Um, I learned about these leadership principles when I was a teenager. Uh, uh, and the one thing is this, I had such great supportive parents that when I wanted to do something, um, they encouraged me. Um, they also, um, you know, it's why, for example, I would tell people being a Flynn is something special because you know why. Um, I just knew that I said, listen, um, we can do this. And the principles that I put out there and the things that we do have just made it great. And it's why it's my favorite cup. And I, and I legitimately look at this every morning. It says, I'm a Flynn. I don't stop when I'm tired. I stop when I'm done. And it's really funny because do I get tired sometimes? Yeah. I grind and I enjoy it, but even sometimes I get a little tired, but I never stop. And because I just believe I'm just getting started. So therefore, I'm not done with anything. I really am not. Um, we continue to, once again, as we hired Dr. Bryce recently and other wonderful docs and other wonderful staff and other wonderful people went through the academy, other coaches, other people, other nurses, other nurse directors. We just keep on hiring amazing people. So if you want to join our team in 2024, and be with an amazing company growing. And growth is a very important part of us. It's why on Memorial Day weekend, 
we're having and starting bringing back my seminar I started in 2012, you can see right here, our Leadership and Longevity Conference. I believe that leadership is so important in the skills. And guess what happens, guys? Leadership is just influence, and you influence somebody every single day. Doc, I'm not a leader. Yes, you are. You need to understand that. Because if you know people are watching, you'd, be, you'd, you'd actually change how you act every single day. I always say this. If a camera followed you around every single day, what would they find out about you? Longevity. We have all these healthcare principles that are important. So do me a favor. Um, I'm going to be posting a link next week because tickets do go on sale and we will sell it. It's going to be a local event here in Green Bay because I love our community of Green Bay. We've partnered with some huge, wonderful companies that uh, we believe in them and they believe in us. And we're going to bring a wonderful weekend for people of learning, training, and we will literally train during the, the longevity day and during the leadership day. We'll have workbooks so you can just plan your life out. I've always seen this. You know, I see people plan their vacations more than they plan their life. I see, here, watch, do this as an experiment as you're hanging out with people. Ask people what they, what they are like and what they get done the week before vacation. They have a social security plan. They get all this stuff done before they leave. But they do that more with their vacations than they do their life. Imagine planning your life out like that. I have. And, and drunk. I may be going in one direction, and all of a sudden I realize it's a dead end. We're going this direction. That happens all the time. But being a leader, you're constantly looking for those things to make everything better as time goes on. Now, with that being said, we also have longevity days. I have some experts coming in. I'll have not only my wellness way people speak, but also other experts that believe in what we're doing. Once again, I have a cancer specialist that's going to be coming in who believes that sugar is one of the biggest contributors to why it is that way. And he's a researcher. Um, he's been published. It's kind of exciting. We're just going to bring this to the community. And again, it's going to be all of our docs will be coming in from all over. Plus, it's going to be community people. It's quite exciting. So once again, Travis put up that graphic again. And you can see it here. So I will start posting a link, but I want to put save the date on there. And the great thing is, you guys know this. I will always tell you this, and I will always brag about the people around me on a regular basis because Travis, Eric, uh, um, everybody, even just in the studio right there, we have all the wonderful people here. Um, all these things are done with wonderful people that we do on a daily basis. And it's kind of neat. We have the most creative people. Um, and yesterday, uh, one of our Leaders, um, her name is Beth, she runs the student program because we have wonderful student program uh, people, uh, uh, students, uh, clubs all over by the chiropractic schools. And it's nice because, once again, I love being a chiropractor. I love the information you give. We don't give medical advice because I believe the chiropractic advice and also the advice that uh, we have for information that we give out is actually it's dramatically different. I tell people, you want medical advice? Go get their advice. It's not what we do in the show. It's not what we do the wellness way. Uh, we will never give medical advice. We put out health information that makes your life better in every single way. And what happened was this, is Beth was um, out this week uh, enjoying a wonderful time off with her family and stuff, and she was missed. And then we have all these wonderful students. We have a big student program next month, uh, students from all over the country, and we'll, they'll be here during a, sh a Saturday show. I think it's the last weekend of January. And it's kind of neat. And our creative team got together with our staff here to actually, you know, Beth is their leader of the team this way. And so Eric and Aiden and Justin and Kyle and everybody that they did, they literally put this video together in one day. I laughed my butt off because it obviously references Home Alone. And you're going to see some of our staff and actually you can even see our warehouse manager, Craig and his wonderful wife, Dion, are in there. Allie's in there. You got to watch this video. I laughed my butt off because it has some home alone reference. Dr. Jason jumped in. So let's take a look and see what they had created. They're gone. The, the interns all graduated. There's just, there's a hole in my heart that can only be filled by these students. Hey. You know, and and the students are all on vacation, enjoying themselves and with their family. I know, it hurts. It's just not the same. It's not. It's just... um, <clears throat> hey guys, uh, I have a package for Beth. Where is Beth? Is she off today? I don't know. Did we make Beth disappear? We made Beth disappear. She's not here?
Hey Beth, we're eating our food allergies and sugar. You better come out and stop us. <laughs> Obviously Beth's on vacation and we miss you guys a whole ton and we hope you had a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Hey everybody, obviously that was just a fun video to, to catch up and let you know that we miss you guys. We hope you had an excellent Christmas. Uh, this weekend is New Year's, happy New Year's. We miss you guys, but we look forward to the journeys ahead. Happy New Year, take care guys and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Oh, just watching these guys do this is kind of fun. Uh, thank you, Travis, Abby, uh, Dion, uh, Craig, uh, everybody involved in the video. That way it made it. Um, and they put that together really fast. And we wanted to thank all you students and your future doctors that are uh, part of our student program. We appreciate you. We miss you. We'll see you next month. Uh, but uh, see, that comes from being surrounded by wonderful talent. I have my talents. I know what God gifted me with. I try to work on those every day for you guys. But what happens is this. Anything that you want to accomplish great, understand it takes other people. It really does. And sometimes other people don't have the blessings or benefits that you guys do and that I have, so we love our giveaways. Um, the wellness way, um, not only the fact that from corporately did we give, I said, over $100,000 of gifts away, um, but what happens is this, other wellness ways uh, contributed to it massively. Every office gave wonderful things to people in need, from supplements to labs to tests to uh, adjustments to anything that was needed for their community that way. Um, we tried to have wonderful things here for Christmas for everybody. Uh, even last night, there was people outside the ball taking pictures that way and everything, which is fantastic. And yes, some of you guys know this. Some people tried to vandalize our things last night, which was really sad because um, we try to bring things to our community. We do wonderful things, but just understand there are evil, bad people out there. With all good, there's bad. With all dark, there's light. And when you do great things, just understand, you're gonna get some darkness. Um, but good people will stand up for what's right and do what's right, and uh, so why? I always do that regardless of the consequences and everything. So, because good people have consequences too. It's because there's bad people out there. There really is. Heck, some of you guys know those bad people. Heck, some of you guys watching might be some of those bad people. <laughs> so, change it, okay? We want you to have a good year. But that being said, as we move forward, we're gonna get into our giveaways that we have our wonderful staff over here that's going to do. So let's turn it over to them. And as Travis throws our good old dancing snowman on there and stuff like that, I think I got to join in there. I'll turn the music. We'll go. So all right there, guys, take over for here. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Elf Alley. Um, I just wanted to say that if you are a previous winner or a current winner today, to please email giveaways at thewellnessway.com with your first and last name as well as your phone number. I would love to connect with you and get your awesome prize. All right. Okay. So we're going to start off the giveaways with our new patient visit. $435 value. We have five of them to give away today. Mm -hmm. First winner is Amy Watson. Congratulations. <laughs> Second winner is Marsha P. Yeah, right? Ooh. Yeah, we'll get that up. Cue that up. <laughs> Our third winner is Connie Lacey. <laughs> Our fourth winner is Georgia Meyer. And our last but not least winner is Jean Murphy. And next we'll move on to the new patient visit and the test read visit. That is a $735 value. The winners are Chrissy Harvey, Danette, Tammy Blackmore, and Dee Rillman. <laughs> we were late on that one. <laughs> Fabulous. All right, now we've got some amazing Academy scholarships. So all of the fabulous information um, that are life-changing um, wellness way certified health coaches can give you um, so for those a $14,000 um, value scholarship we have Amazing. Rachel <laughs> Driesen <laughs> and Celeste Patrick Yay. we also <laughs> want to encourage anyone who has commented there has been so much interest in these to please watch for an email from our coordinator, Haley. Um, she's going to be emailing y'all with um, 
a special surprise. So keep an eye out for your inboxes. If we don't have your email, please email us at giveaways and just let us know that you were interested in that academy. However, we're not announced as a winner for this giveaway, but stay tuned. Next, so. we're gonna move on to our baskets. I know okay. that is a big popular thing. So, okay, so I think that this is probably a given that I've got the no sugar baskets. I'm the elf who loves <laughs> frosting the most, right? <laughs> this may have been typecast. So we have some fabulous gifts in this basket. We've got Gymnema, Oregon grape, blood sugar glandular, stevia, monk fruit chocolate, no sugar booklet. How to do this whole no sugar thing in January. I see all the comments. Everybody's so excited for this, mm -hmm. right? Um, and of course, a fabulous Wellness Way t-shirt, the most comfortable t-shirts in all the land. And this basket goes to Shelly Yu. Shelly! Yay. Yay! Fabulous! All right, we are going to move into my favorite basket, the immune system and support basket. So included in this is astragalus, immune glandular, elderberry, echinacea, organ grape, reishi, a shot glass to take all of those wonderful supplements. <laughs> socks, ooh, those are some of the best socks I think I've ever worn. Um, an immune test, all right. Got Camu Camu, vitamin C blend, mushroom immune, and of course some chocolate. I mean, come on. <laughs> all right, and the winner of this amazing basket is going to be Ashley Benke. Yay! <laughs> Moving on to our holiday travel basket which includes Wellzymes, Digestwell, Elbesia, Silver, Potassium, Betaine, Vitamin D3, K2, Relax, some chocolate, and a travel awesome. herb bag. This is such an awesome basket for all the travel that you're gonna be doing. And that goes to Norma Frost. Yay. Congratulations. Yay. And our last basket, and I can tell from the feed you all have been through a lot this season, so this is a very <laughs> popular basket, the Stress Relief Basket. That includes a California poppy, of course, kava, CBD, relax, ashwagandha, shizandra, potassium, a shot glass to take all of these awesome herbs, chocolate, of course, and an assortment of teas and a wellness weight notebook. And that goes to Kristen Karanen. Yay! <laughs> Last but not least, the 12-month care plan. Now this includes a new patient exam, excuse me, new patient exam, 12 consult visits, a test read, and two food education visits. Folks, this is an amazing, amazing gift. And Allie, All drum right. roll, please. So the big winner is going to be Shannon Bali. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating, and we'll see you all next year. Bye. Thank you, guys. I want to wish everybody a happy new year. We're going to do some wonderful celebration with the people that we dearly love and our teams and all the wonderful people that we like to celebrate and live life with that way. So I once again want to say thank you to everybody that works uh, for the Wellness Way across the world. We appreciate you guys. Um, it's been a great year. I can't thank you enough for all the effort that you put in constantly. Um, I will continue to give every ounce of my heart and soul to all you guys, to all the people that I dearly care about, to the show, to the Wellness Way, and I guarantee that next year will be even a bigger, more banner year. We will bring you even more great stuff with more great people and wonderful talent and wonderful things. And if you want to join our team, trust me, go to the website. There's wonderful opportunities. We hire people from all over the world. It's kind of exciting. And look forward to the stuff that we are putting out there. Because once again, as we want to bring the best information for you so you can take control of your health and you can do wonderful things for yourself and live a very healthy, vibrant life. So like I always like to tell people, I want you to stay healthy and stay free. God bless all you guys. We will see you next year. For the unedited, full-length, unapologetic content, go to our website to watch ADP shows. Hit that subscribe button and join our community for the most amazing content like this every day.